So unlike something where it could just be you know, a statistical anomaly based on a single big move, actually we've seen that very consistently when people start paying attention to Tesla on Reddit, uh, or at least on the Wall Street Bets board, you do see consistent moves up in the name. Hey, I'm Steven and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So in today's video, I'm reacting to some comments from a Barclays researcher who apparently believes that they've discovered a correlation, a predictive correlation between people discussing Tesla on Wall Street bets and the stock having positive price movements. So let's get into the video. But first, hey guys, if you'd like to help out the channel and get up to two free stocks, check out the link in the description to Webull. If you open a new account, you'll get one free stock valued up to $250 just for opening an account. And if you fund your account with $100, you'll get a second free stock valued up to $1,600. Unless you don't like free stocks, that is. And if you're in Australia, the UK or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Let's get back to it. So a quick primer for those of you who aren't familiar with Wall Street Bets or would just like to refresh your memory. Wall Street Bets is a corner of the internet on Reddit where a lot of the world's degenerates currently living in their mother's basements, most of them adult virgins who've never even touched a member of the opposite sex, also known as female. Not sure what they teach you guys in university these days. This forum now has millions of people, mostly trolls, throwing around terms that are so politically incorrect I can't even quote them on this channel lest I be demonetized. What am I going to do? In fact, Wall Street Bet's own description probably sums things up perfectly. It's like 4chan found a Bloomberg terminal. That is to say that the vast majority of people here are completely out of their minds, have no idea what they're doing, are betting huge sums of money they can't afford to lose on extremely high risk and basically brain dead investments. Why? Part of it's for the lols. Sometimes I honestly wonder if these people are just so far down the social hierarchy that they want some form of significance in their own lives. They don't matter. No one cares about them. They don't feel very good about themselves. They don't have a high level of self-esteem. And this may be one way to just temporarily get some feeling of significance as if they matter. Hey man, look, this guy put his whole net worth on this really ridiculous short-term call option. Probably going to lose all his money. YOLO. Yeah. Welcome to the club. Hidden away amongst the degeneracy, the memes, the lols and the trolls, however, is some legitimately great investment research, advice, and insights. However, it really does take some digging to discover. Wall Street Bets and I have an interesting history. Around two years ago or so, I shared my investment thesis around Tesla on Reddit and pretty much got laughed out of the door. Somebody reposted something along the lines of, haha, this autist, by the way, good call dude, I actually am an autist. Shout out to everyone on the spectrum. This autist has all his money in Tesla stock. What an idiot, something along those lines, right? A few people trolling in the comments, lots of people hoping I lose all my money, thinking that I was just one of these idiots on Wall Street Bets, putting all my money into a company I knew nothing about, just hoping that things would turn out all right. But of course, as you guys have discovered, at least those of you who've watched some of the 400 odd videos I've made explaining why I'm all in on Tesla stock, you'll probably understand I did actually have a reason for doing that. I wasn't just YOLOing my entire net worth because I thought it would be a good idea. I'd done a lot of digging and had an extremely high level of conviction. In fact, Reddit and Wall Street Bets were one of the core reasons I started this YouTube channel. After posting a few times, getting laughed at, having people think I was a moron, completely disregarding some of the prediction I was making about what Tesla would do in the future, which by the way, have since played out, I thought, you know what, I'm, I can't deal with this. I'm just gonna put everything I know in video format. People can watch or they can ignore, they can believe or not, they can understand, they can look into it, they can do their own research, follow the breadcrumbs, walk through the doors I've opened for them, get the opportunity, invest in the company or not, that's fine. I'm not going to waste time responding individually to people trying to explain the thesis. I've got to leverage my time better than that. So sure enough, I start the YouTube channel. So here we are looking at the Tesla stock price chart. You guys might notice something. There's a period of about half a decade where Tesla stock did nothing. In fact, it did less than nothing. There were periods in 2019 where you could buy Tesla stock for 24, 25% less than it was at periods in 2014 despite the fact that their revenue had been growing at an astronomical rate, the sales, their delivery, they were headed towards profitability, they had a huge technological lead, the world's best engineers, they were moving faster than anybody else, blah, blah, I could keep going on and on and on. The point is, the stock did absolutely nothing. I'm like, I just, I need to tell people, like, I just, hello, and sure enough, I start the channel. Now, anyone wanna take a guess at exactly where I started the channel? Well, I'll give you guys a hint. It was about here, Cybertruck is engineering genius, followed up by a few other videos, and uh, yeah, Tesla stock's done okay since then. No, I'm not suggesting that my channel single-handedly move Tesla stock 10x, I think that would be absolutely absurd. But it was extremely obvious to me at the time I started the channel that something like this was gonna play out sometime in the next few years, and sure enough, impeccable timing, there you go. So the point of this long-winded rant, 
at least occasionally, someone on the interwebs, particularly on somewhere like Reddit, namely Wall Street Bets, may actually share some useful, insightful, valid, relevant ideas, research, and predictions about a company or a stock which may actually be grounded in reality and may play out. So in this video, we'll see if there really is a correlation between some of the research, using the term so loosely that I did air quotes backwards, what am I, I'm not even high today. Anyway, some of the so-called research around Tesla, is there a correlation between understanding, oh, there's an opportunity here, this gets disseminated throughout Wall Street bets, then a few of the adult virgins living in their mother's basements jump on their favorite trading app, by the way, don't forget your free stocks below with Weeble, and decide to buy that stock. Is this possible? Well, that is the topic of today's discussion. Welcome back to Fast Money. The Reddit trade on fire in today's rally. Check out some of these big moves. GameStop and AMC leading the group with double-digit gains. Tesla gaining more than 6%. Barclays is out with a new note connecting the dots, saying there is a clear connection between Tesla's stock price and the number of times it is mentioned on Reddit's Wall Street Bets board. Let's bring in Ryan Preclaw, head of investment sciences at Barclays. Ryan, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. When I saw the headline of the report, I immediately thought, is this just a coincident indicator? In other words, is the number of times it's mentioned on Reddit, is, does it coincide with the stock's rise? But you actually say that this is predictive in some way? Yeah, that's right. So when we uh, look into that, what we see is that actually the, the most close connection between uh, Reddit and Tesla stock price is how many people uh, put submissions onto Reddit about Tesla two days ago and one day ago for price moves today. So there's really at least a couple of days uh, lag in terms of when people are talking about it and when you get the big efforts. Being an extremely skeptical, rational, scientifically minded, evidence-based person who believes things when I have sufficient evidence and extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. I must say, I'm a little bit skeptical at this stage. I'm not really sure if there's going to be enough data for these guys to have drawn any reasonable conclusions, any that are statistically valid, but I'll give them the benefit of the doubt now. Hopefully they'll share more of their methodology, we'll get an understanding of the numbers, how they extracted this data, and we'll find out if there is any reason to believe that there may be a correlation between mentions of Tesla stock one to two days before the stock then moves a percent or two. Let's find out. So when you, when you say that the stock usually moves higher, is there an average move or, I mean, can you quantify that in some way? Uh, you know, it varies in terms of particular ones, but generally we're talking about, um, it, you know, and it's going to be a function of how many times people are talking about it, but it can be several percentage points if you're seeing big surges in uh, attention in terms of what people are posting on Reddit. So it's talking about a meaningful amount. We're also talking about a number of different times. So one of the things we did was we went through and we looked at what are all the times when there was big spikes in attention on Reddit uh, regarding Tesla. And in how many of those cases do we see the stock move up? And the answer was uh, in pretty much all of the top 10 and many, many of the top 20. And so unlike something where it could just be you know, a statistical anomaly based on a single big move, actually we've seen that very consistently when people start paying attention to Tesla on Reddit, uh, or at least on the Wall Street Bets board, you do see consistent moves up in the name. Call me a skeptic here, but I'm not really buying this. I don't think that's a large enough sample size. They're suggesting that in, quote, most, didn't even give an actual number, in most of the top 10 instances where there's increased discussion about Tesla, they saw an increase in Tesla stock price a couple of days later. Cool story, bro. Certainly something to investigate, but not really statistically significant in my opinion. Again, they're talking about in many of the top 20 cases, Tesla stock is being mentioned, then there's a correlation with upward movement in Tesla stock. Again, not really a huge sample size there. Now, I did actually try to look online to find this research methodology. Look at all the numbers. You know, generally speaking, when you're doing research, there's data. You can put your methodology, say, okay, this is exactly what we look for. We look for this search term and this term, this many instances, this many engagements. This is a correlation we saw. Still a little bit vague. I mean, why aren't these guys making it easy for people to find their methodology in their actual research? You know what? I'm just thinking out loud here, but could it be possible that these guys are really just desperately trying to remain relevant, stay in the spotlight, garner a little bit of attention, get some new clients for their research firm, their investment firm, etc.? Could that be a possibility? Just again, thinking out loud, because right now, I don't even know why this is being run on CNBS. I'm really not buying it. I honestly think these guys are just trying to remain relevant. Oh, Reddit, Wall Street bets. Oh, the meme train. Yeah, let's get on board. All aboard the meme train. Let's try and remain relevant because we don't know what the fuck we're talking about. Hey, I wonder what the Barclays price target is on Tesla stock. This would be interesting. Let's bring it up. Let's see what these guys who obviously do great research have noticed a correlation on Wall Street bets with Tesla stock. 
Let's see how much they understand about Tesla stock itself, you know, given the fact that they do analysis and research. This Reddit Wall Street bets correlation is just a tiny aspect of that. Let's go a little bit more macro and try to understand how competent are these people at the first place in doing research around stocks just out of interest. All right, so here we are looking at the Barclays Analyst Profile on tipranks.com. And as you can see, oh my God, that's, oh, oh shit, I did it again. God, sorry guys, that was Gordon Genius Johnson. I just I just keep doing it, I just can't help myself. This idiot with a $67 price target on Tesla stock, obviously he's got no stars because he's a moron. Let's bring up the actual Barclays Analyst Profile now. So sorry about that, I just, I keep doing it. It's just habit now. Okay, here we are. Now we've got the correct profile. As you can see, Brian Johnson of Barclays actually knows what he's talking on. Are you, wait, seriously, dude? Are you serious? 7,074 out of 7,342 analysts? This guy is like Gordon Johnson's cousin. Like he's literally in the same tier of absolutely no fucking idea what you're talking about. Wow, this is impressive. Look at that success rate, 50%, a literal coin toss. So it seems that the Barclays Wall Street analyst at least uh, sucks shit and probably shouldn't have a job based on those returns, an average return of negative 5.5% per year. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm being unfair. Let's see their Tesla stock price target. $230, 69 ratings. Well, this would be fun. Let's see what, what have their ratings been like over the last few years. Let's just, maybe they know what the, oh my God. Okay, let's go back. This is gonna be juicy. Oh, a success rate of 31% on the stock, average profit on Tesla stock, more than 100% loss per year. I mean, what are you, what even is this? Okay, they initiated with a buy back in 2013, then hold, 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 hold through 2014, 2015, then sell, sell, sell through 16, 17, 18, 19. Now, you guys remember that demo earlier in the video, right? I showed Tesla stock did nothing for five years. I'm like, hello, revenue's growing. That entire time these idiots were saying sell the stock and I'm like loading up with every spare cent. They're still saying sell, sell, sell all the way up to today's present moment, okay? They've had one buy rating, which was when they initiated. Then the whole time it's either been hold or sell. So I'm just thinking out loud now. These guys are appearing on CNBS, emphasis on BS, and sharing their supposed research implying that they have discovered a statistically significant correlation between discussion of Tesla stock on Wall Street bets and Tesla stock get they don't reveal their methodology. I can't find their research online to see how they actually drew these conclusions. I can't find any data whatsoever. Could it be possible, just thinking out loud, no accusations here, just do your own research, but could it be possible that they're actually attempting to make themselves a little bit more right about Tesla stock by spreading a little bit of FUD, some fear and uncertainty and doubt, implying that maybe these adult virgins on Wall Street bets somehow are influencing the stock price of Tesla, therefore that's pretty dangerous and scary, so maybe don't invest in Tesla stock. Just again, thinking out loud here, but I'm just trying to understand, I mean, how can you possibly have had a sell rating on Tesla stock for like five years the entire time? There wasn't a single opportunity there where it made sense to buy? I mean, this Muppet from Barclays, this analyst using the term extraordinarily loosely is literally in Gordon the Class Clown Johnson territory with his success rates at the absolute bottom of the pile. This is an embarrassment. Imagine going home to your family. It's like, hey guys, I moved up from 7,075 out of 7,342 to 7,074 out of 7,342 analysts. Yeah, go me. And I've noticed a disturbing little fact here. Notice the number of ratings on all of the different stocks covered by these guys. Long story short, I'll just quickly scroll. You guys can pause if you really want to verify. The stock that they have the most ratings on, which they've also been extraordinarily wrong on, is Tesla. Now, just asking the question here, wouldn't it kind of make sense that if you have a high level of confidence in your predictions that you'd then be providing lots of ratings on a stock because you really feel that you know what's going on? So I'm thinking here, if you're so wrong for so long, so many times you had that confidence to put another rating on the stock and it turns out you're wrong. At any point, you take a step back and think, you know what guys, we think we know a lot about Tesla stock. We keep providing these ratings and we're wrong every single time. Maybe we should either revisit our methodology or just shut the fuck up about the stock. Unless of course there's an ulterior motive for suggesting people sell Tesla stock. Not suggesting that there is. I'm just again thinking out loud. Things aren't really quite adding up here. I'm sure there are a number of caveats to all of this, Ryan. I mean, especially because this whole phenomenon is pretty new. So the number of times you had to study is probably pretty limited. Can you talk through that in terms of the number of instances you were able to study? And then also, if you were able to really um, go through the board effectively in that 
so many times it's all about emojis and, and memes, and, and that's hard to, to go through you know, for an algorithm, for AI, or, or for human, for that matter. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I think uh, when we looked at it, we actually found something like 20 separate you know, big spike events. Now, those big spike events tended to run multiple days, and so we actually had a pretty reasonable amount of data to work with, certainly enough to get to statistical significance. Um, you know, what we what we did find though is actually hard to isolate down into when people were talking about Tesla. You know, when you think about uh, translating posts into data, there's a bunch of things that you can do. One of the first ones, you just have to extract the ticker or the name that they're talking about. You know, we did that by looking at times people were talking about, you know, dollar TSLA or capital TSLA. But even within that, you know, people would post things where they're talking about multiple tickers uh, and you have to parse those out. What we used here and what got us the best results were those clear results where the number of submissions where people were talking about Tesla and just Tesla, uh, which gave, I think, a very sort of clean read on, on you know, are people talking about this name? But it's certainly not trivial to just extract that from, uh, from the feed itself. <laughs> you put this note uh, out jointly, I believe, with the Tesla analysts. I'm curious, you know, what, what role this would play or will play or could play in the future in terms of the firm's recommendations of stocks. Do you think that this is something that will continue to be studied and maybe factored into research? Yeah, look, I think any investor now or anyone who wants to take an opinion on a security needs to start factoring in this question of, is this going to become a meme, meme stock? Is this something that's going to gain attention on social media? You know, what we see here is that you're talking about only a few days lag. Um, so I think people will have to be cautious in terms of how they talk about it. But if you're covering any stock that you think could could go into or where you know, attention could land on it on social media, I think you have to be thinking whatever my range of up and down was or whatever the volatility of the move I felt like could happen with this name, maybe now I have to think about whether that's much bigger now than it used to be in the past. That's it, guys. I think I figured out what's going on here. Of course, totally my own opinion. Do your own research, blah, fucking blah, blah, blah. I think that the whole motivation behind this uh, so-called research from Barclays is to scare people out of Tesla stock by implying that it's going to be far more volatile in the future now because of Wall Street bets and being a meme stock than in the past. Just a couple of things to address here. First of all, the notion that Tesla is a meme stock and belongs in the same pile as GameStop, AMC, BlackBerry, Nokia, etc. Just absurd. Like, absolutely absurd. Smart tactic though, but let's be honest, okay? Those people investing in these types of companies, the Blackberries and Nokias, the AMCs, etc. are one, insane. Two, probably going to lose most of their money. And three, not investors, okay? The people investing in Tesla stock, sure, there's probably some of them who've done no research, but most actually believe in the company, actually identify the huge technological lead, actually believe that lead is probably unassailable, actually believe that in the future Tesla will be producing millions of EVs per year, actually believe Tesla's going to have robo-taxis on roads and completely disrupt transportation, not just vehicles, but transportation itself, and also going to completely disrupt energy. <laughs> the very notion that Tesla stock belongs in the same category as these meme stocks, GameStop, AMC, Nokia, BlackBerry, etc. I mean, come on guys, it is absolutely ridiculous and deserves, that's right, to be ridiculed. So, Dear Barclays analysts, dear Barclays researchers, everyone involved in this so-called analysis about Tesla stock and the correlation with Wall Street bets, you guys are either one, morons, two, incompetent, and three, shouldn't have a job, or maybe you have nefarious motivations. I don't know what's what, but it's definitely one or the other. You're either complete fucking morons or you're bad actors. I don't know what's what, but I'm going to call a spade a spade. You deserve to be ridiculed for this research, and I am here on YouTube ridiculing you because your research is ridiculous. All right, Ryan, we've got to leave it there. Really interesting stuff. Hope you come back. Ryan Preclaw, Great, Barclays. Guy Dami, if I were to read between the lines of what Ryan just said, it sounds like regardless of what people may think of, of the Reddit army, whatever you want to call that, it has changed the way Wall Street operates on some levels including research 100 percent no question i mean i you know i i can only really speak for myself in terms of this i admire a lot of these folks in terms of the due diligence they did and the work that was done behind the name like gamestop i've said it a few times they understand more about volatility and negative gamma than probably the people that were putting on the positions on the other side so good for them that they caught this i mean i'm not here to cast aspersions what i am here to say is though 
I think there are an army of people. I also think there are a few people behind that army that are probably pulling the strings. And I'd be fascinated to know or to learn who those folks are. And that will come out at some point. The puppet master in all of this is still yet to be um, um, displayed. Unveiled. The puppet master unveiled. has yet to be <laughs> unveiled. Mm, interesting there. Guy is suggesting that there's a puppet master or two behind the scenes pulling strings at Wall Street bets, maybe. Um, I have to say, I don't have any evidence either way here, but my gut feel, which is super unscientific, but it's all I've got to go on, my gut feel is uh, unlikely, dude. Now, let's be real here. It's possible, sure, there could be somebody, lots of bot accounts, fake accounts, somebody sort of planting information, trying to manipulate the market. But I think more likely it's actually just a bunch of basement dwelling adult virgins sharing their thoughts and their actions around stocks. Occasionally somebody says something that a few other people like the sound of, jump on board. Sometimes maybe somebody will make a video even on YouTube, post that, a few people will listen and go, oh damn, that makes sense, I might share that with somebody. Generally speaking, I think due to the virality of the internet, the fact that ideas can propagate so quickly, it's kind of like a free marketplace, this idea competing with that idea. In fact, to bring things full circle, maybe you guys have heard of Richard Dawkins, the evolutionary biologist who's also laid the smackdown on people believing extraordinarily dumb shit over the last 10, 15 years. Yeah, that guy. He actually coined the term meme. The whole idea, by the way, that was in his 1976 book, The Selfish Gene, one of my favorite books of all time really shifted my perspective. So Dawkins coined the term meme to refer to ideas and suggested that ideas, much like life, compete for survival. So sometimes a great idea will rise to the top, sometimes a pretty terrible idea will rise to the top. And I think this is what we're seeing happen in Wall Street Bets. Some ideas simply for whatever reason, whether they're good or bad, whether they make sense or not, whether they're memorable or not, sometimes end up out competing other ideas. This is why we'll see a lot of discussion around certain stocks, people buying into certain investment theses, etc. But at the end of the day, I personally don't think there's a puppet master pulling the strings behind the scenes on Wall Street Bets. I think what we're seeing play out is the battle of memes, of ideas. So I think what we're seeing play out on Reddit has nothing to do with a puppet master. Nobody's pulling strings behind the scenes. Just a bunch of ideas being put out into the interwebs. Some of them rise to the top and outcompete others. Simple as that. Yeah, James, go ahead. There's new data from a Massachusetts-based firm called PIIQ Media, and it shows that there's tens of thousands of bot accounts that may have fueled this Reddit frenzy. And while we're attributing this activity to humans, um, thousands of bot accounts can be bought for as little as $200 a piece. And since the squeeze, uh, the Wall Street Beth has seen an inflow of over 2 million new members. Um, and the firm found that start-stop patterns coinciding with day trading uh, compared to other tops, there were clearly patterns there. And so mm -hmm. um, all of this is looking at the etiology of the system uh, where stocks are being pushed around, bullied around, there's a lot of computer science happening behind the scenes as well. And there's some firms looking into alternative conspiracy theories, so to speak, on the bots. Um, and so I would say just, you know, let's not ignore the bots as, as an influencer. Um, and if there's an actor behind the bots or multiple actors behind the bots, that's really got to be factored in as well. Oh, for sure. I, I, I always, from the from day one, wondered whether or not every single account was tied to an actual human being. But at the same time, the activity on Reddit is, in fact, driving stock price action, which is, I think, the bottom line here, at least for us in terms of, of stock movements. Now, I admit I'm an ultra skeptic. Maybe I've been a little bit harsh here on Barclays, but I'm never going to be the kind of guy that believes dumb shit without evidence. I don't see anywhere near enough evidence here. These clowns have not even made their research available unless I'm so dumb I can't even find it. So I can't really study the methodology, can't really see the samples, how they correlated, how they understood, etc. I just cannot understand. I don't have the evidence. I've got nothing to go on except this appearance on CNBS, which really to me seemed to be an attempt to lump Tesla in with a bunch of these meme stocks to suggest there's going to be volatility and maybe it's a terrible investment as a stock investor. But of course, I'm just one guy. So let me know in the comments below. What do you guys think? First of all, what are the motivations of Barclays in sharing this so-called research? And second, do you actually think that activity on Wall Street bets is having a material impact on Tesla's stock price? Let me know in the comments below. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem and I love you all.
And don't forget, if you'd like to help out the channel and get up to two free stocks, check out the link in the description to Webull. If you open a new account, you'll get one free stock valued up to $250 just for opening an account. And if you fund your account with $100, you'll get a second free stock valued up to $1,600. And if you're in Australia, the UK or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private Discord server and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can keep creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. You can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe and don't forget to check out our merch store. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching so thanks again.